Are we live? Are we live? Testing, testing. Testing. Oh, looks promising. It does look promising. Let's see if we can get the link out real quick. Why is getting the link out for a live stream so difficult? Why is anything on YouTube so difficult? I've had the same thumbnail for this live stream like 10 times in a row. Should probably switch that up. What up? What up? Are Beehive. we live? Are we live? Messy. Testing, testing. Oh. Now I'm running the live stream in the background. What up? What up? Good to see you guys. Guys, make sure if you're here early. Murdoch, what up? What up? Nice to see you again, Murdoch. Guys, make sure if you're getting here early, you drop a like on the stream. A little late night stream tonight. Let's try to get the viewer shit up. Viewer shit up. Hold on. Un momento, sorry everyone. All right. Let's go, let's go. All right, chat's kind of popping off right now. Chat's kind of popping off right now. Let's go. Linda, good to see you. Vincent Floor, good to see you. Harlan, Nom Nom, Landon, uh, John, Mappa. What up, what up, what up? Good to see everyone. Good. It's nice to see the chat kind of popping off early. We already have 86 people in here. Wow, almost 50 likes too. You guys are killing it. You guys are absolutely killing it. Guys, let's see if we can get to a let's see if we can get to a hundred likes right off rip. Get this stream popping. And if you guys have any questions, make sure to drop them in the chat. Uh I, I certainly do not have any agenda planned right now. So uh it's up to you guys. Take it wherever you want it. Drop whatever you whatever you want in the chat. Uh Steve, good to see you. Brian, members popping off. Nice to see everyone. Nice to see everyone. Hey from the UK. No, guys, I don't have any breaking news. Just um, just answering some questions, just having a conversation, right? Uh, wanted to jump on and see who's on at this hour, you know? Uh, I always do the live streams early in the day, so hopefully you can pick up some new people, right? Give Get into some different time zones here. Hello from New York City. I, I'm, I'm close to you. I'm close to you. I'm close to you. Yeah, let's get this to 100 likes. I just tweeted out the stream on X, too. Um... Hopefully get some people in from there. Am I going to XRP Vegas? Vincent, I will be in Vegas. I'm hyped for it too. I'm, I'm super hyped for Vegas. I will be in Vegas. Uh, really, really excited for that. Um, Friday is going to be crazy. Why? What's Friday? Any updates on the Ripple SEC case? Well, I did a, did a lot on that in my video today, but I'll give you the quick update because... There is some pretty interesting information in regards to the Ripple SEC case. Um, so I wasn't really paying attention to the schedule for a bit, but essentially what we're looking at is a... Ed, Ed, good to see you, man. Good to see you, Ed. Um, essentially what we're looking at in the Ripple SEC case right now is Ripple is going to do their filing, um, their response to the SEC. The SEC was asking for $2 billion from Ripple, uh, as a fine, Ripple is going to be putting their response in. Um, that's going to be happening uh, March, no, April 22nd. And then after that, the SEC has two weeks to respond. And then the case is over. And then we're just waiting for Judge Torres to rule, which hopefully will take less than two to three months. Um, and then the case is done, right? So we're on the back half here. Um, super cool to see us finally get to this point. But yeah. No, the, the case is the case is pretty close to being wrapped up at this point. Uh in in less than in less than two months, uh all the evidence is gonna be out there and it's just Judge Torres making her ruling. So pretty exciting stuff there. Um it's nice to finally be at this point after a long, long battle. But you know, one day we're just gonna wake up and this case is gonna be a thing of the past. And uh, I think we need to accept at this point that after four years, right, we're very, very close to the end of it. We're very close to that eventuality that the case is, in fact, over and it's not coming back. Ed, good to see you, man. Ed, you got anything? 
Ed's always got great questions. Ed's always got great questions. Uh, three dots on the top right to like and subscribe. Yeah, that'd be absolutely awesome. Yeah, guys, the stream is popping off right now. We're already close to 200 people in here. Um, really, really cool stuff. So uh, make sure to drop a like on the stream. Would love to get as many people in here as possible. I should live stream from Vegas. Yeah, I would love to live stream from Vegas. Yeah, Murdoch, the dollar is, you know, Murdoch, why don't, why don't we pull up some charts, right? Let's take a look at some charts. Why not? We'll take a look at the dollar, Murdoch, because the dollar chart is one that I find uh, particularly fascinating, right? Um, I know Murdoch loves talking about the dollar. It's one I like, too. Um, the dollars have done pretty much everything I didn't think it would over... Uh, over the past couple over the past couple uh really months right so we'll, we'll, we'll pull that up we'll take a look one second x y uh, sets futures there we go all right get trading view open all right Apparently, I was looking at a chart of this fairly recently, so I'm going to have some random ass lines drawn on it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Um, press the like button. Yes. What's your XRP price prediction 2024? We'll pull up an XRP price chart in a minute. I, I, I don't typically bring out charts on the channel, but, you know, why not, right? All right. Well, that's not the dollar. Trading view is supposed to pop up on the screen. What the? F oh, I think I know the problem. No, I have no idea what the problem is. I have no idea what the problem is. What's going on? No. Uh, what the heck? Trading view, where are you? There's fiat leak. Uh, sorry, technic technical difficulties. Oh God. Um, trading view. All right, well, apparently I have to change to this big version of me to get trading view open, but it, it's open. We're, we're, we're making progress here, slow and steady. Sorry, guys. Uh, getting used to these live streams still, but we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. All right, there we go. <laughs> Just constructing the live stream live. Uh, all right. Here we have, uh, here we got the dollar. Um, it's a crazy chart, really. Really is a crazy chart. Um, this is going be all the way back to 19, 1977. So this is a very, very long-term chart of the dollar. Um, this is just something that I watch on a super long, long time frame. Um, as you can tell, we're kind of just bouncing around this channel. I would expect us to drop kind of towards the lower end of this channel over the next couple months. Um, the main reason I think we'll probably see something like that is essentially because the United States is just having reckless policy, right? Reckless, reckless, reckless monetary policy. So I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if we did get a move uh, kind of like this right here. I mean, I don't even think it looks that. It almost looks like that's the candle, right? Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw that, but on the shorter time frame, the dollar is showing a decent amount of strength. So let's let's zoom in here and take a look at this on a shorter time frame. We'll we'll dump these out of here. Uh, when you're when you're looking at this time frame, there's 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 no doubt that the dollar's got something going on here, right? The dollar's clearly got some level of strength coming in. Um. And I've been shocked that it's held up this well, despite all the printing and all the debasement of of the dollar. I, I thought the dollar would have got whacked much harder than it has. Um, I think one of the reasons why we could still be seeing strength in the dollar and one of the reasons why we haven't seen the dollar do something like this, right? That would take us to the bottom of the channel um, is essentially because a lot of people are still fearful, fearful of a recession. A lot of people are still fearful of some kind of big macro event and that's causing people to keep holding dollars that's causing people to not become invested that's causing people to essentially be 
holding reserves, right? Because they're worried about what's going to happen in the future. And I think that's propping up the strength. I think high interest rates are also propping up the strength of the dollar, right? Right now, essentially, we've got, uh, I mean, I don't know the exact number, but it's something like a 5% interest rate, right? So if we did have uh, interest rates come down substantially, um, there's a good chance... There's a good chance, in my opinion, that if in interest rates fall, we're also going to see the dollar fall with it and we'll probably be back in an environment that's very risk on and very good for cryptocurrency. So um, that's that's kind of what I'm watching on the dollar. Uh, I, I don't do much on the dollar typically just because it's so slow moving. And I mean, if you just look at this chart right here, right? Uh, hold on. Uh, I mean this period right here, right? The last time the dollar did anything interesting I mean, it's been like 90 days, right of just trading sideways. So the dollar is very very slow moving these formations take a long time to play out but um, From a from a being good or bad for crypto perspective, right this right here what I'm circling This right here is the thing that's bad for crypto right having that big spike in the dollar. That's bad for crypto um, what you can see right here is right. The next direction likely is going to be down and that that's very good for crypto. So, um, I, I think long-term the trend, uh, is in our direction. And one of the good things that's also in our direction, right? Besides the fact that we're likely going to see interest rates come down. Um, uh, the other thing is just endless money printing, right? So, I mean, if you look at the, <laughs> the United States, and they're money printing. Let's see what we got here. Get a nice green, right? Yeah. And I'll, I'll drop it right here. So if you have the United States, this money printing is essentially going through the roof. That's going to cause the value, the value of the dollar, right? To come down. Uh, and I think that could be another catalyst kind of bring the dollar down and uh, just bring it down to these lower levels, right? I'm not calling for a dollar crash. I'm not calling for a dollar um, the dollar to be replaced instantaneously or the dollar to go away, right? I, none of those things really need to happen for the dollar to come down substantially and us to see a lot of money flow back into the stock market and crypto assets. So um, that's, that's generally what I'm looking at on the dollar. Let's see what else we got. Do I think markets are waiting for non-farm payrolls? I don't know how I don't know how serious the market takes the government data. Um, until something significant happens in the job market, I just don't know if I'm that overly concerned or that overly interested with it, Murdoch. Um, it, it's kind of just been a bunch of nothing burgers. So if we get something interesting. Um, then I think the market will pay a little bit more attention to that employment data. But right now I just, I don't know. It, it's never interesting. It's always the same thing over and over again. It just comes in line. Ed in XRP live space, Hoskinson was asked where he thought we would see this bull cycle. He said he felt 25% of the way in and we should go through 2025. What do you say? Uh, we, we can certainly do that. Let's, 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 let's do some charts, right? Why not? That's an XRP chart, but we'll, we'll go to BTC. Oh, I think I have to pivot off this one because I'm too lazy to pay for trading view. See, that's one of the worst things about trading view. It's like if I want Bitcoin, right? I don't want Bitcoin futures. I just want Bitcoin. Oh, oh. all right. Let's take a look. So when I look at crypto, I'm always looking at the log charts, right? Always oh, looking at the log charts. Um, the log charts, in my opinion, just give you such a better view of the entire history of the asset. So I'm always looking at the log charts. Um, we're just going to do some really, really rough drawing here, right? Because the Bitcoin chart is a little bit uh, more complicated to actually chart in any kind of way. So, I mean, realistically, right, you have this one general channel here. This one general channel here. And then you, you you probably see Bitcoin, right? Kind of continue to oscillate within this. Um, 
you know, I, I think actually modeling exactly where Bitcoin is going to go in this entire thing it, it is very difficult, right? Whether or not Bitcoin, like in this general thing, right? I, I guess you can say through 2025, if you were just to draw the same thing over and over again, it's just hard to guess whether or not we're going to continue to see these same cycles over and over again. Like, I think it's very possible that if we actually do get, like, institutional adoption um, that far out seeds exceeds what people think could happen. I mean, I think it's very possible you could see something like this, right? Like, it doesn't just have to keep doing the same exact thing over and over and over again. So, uh, I, I just think, right, like, a lot of people have the same exact chart. They have that same rainbow chart. I don't think anyone's expecting something even more parabolic than what we've had in the past but i think it's certainly possible with the amount of money flowing into this space so i don't know i have a hard time getting on specific time frames time predictions for assets uh i i really do enjoy more just uh going event based waiting for big things like the bitcoin etf wall street adoption uh pension funds getting in for me that's kind of the stuff i focus on rather than time frames um but I mean, like, right, when you have a chart like this, it's just hard not to be bullish. That, that's what I always tell people, right? I mean, if you just drew a very simple technical analysis, right? Like, this is not a this is not a chart you want to be bearish on. And, it, and if you are bearish, you want to be bearish for very short periods of time. That's it's up and to the right. Uh, the good news, there's not too much more XRP to bleed the market. The bad news is basically bled for... Uh, seven years, especially in the last eight months. I completely agree, Jim. I, I, I totally think this is one of the smartest communities in crypto by far. All right, we'll pull up the XRP price chart real quick. Uh, this, this is one of the best price charts out there, in my opinion. One of the best price charts out there. I, I've, I've, you, you don't see a price chart like this too often. I, I've never seen anything like it. Um. I think people would have a lot easier time. Um, I think people would have a lot easier time understanding XRP. People would be a lot more bullish on XRP if we just had a line like this, right? Uh, just a nice, easy, flat trend from the early days to where we are now. I think a lot of people would have a much easier time understanding XRP, but XRP likes to move in these very parabolic fashions and. I think it shakes a lot of people out the way it moves, but this is generally what I'm focused on with XRP. Um, I, I think if you really want to do patterns with XRP, right, you, you have two very similar consolidation patterns going on here. Um, look, I don't like to overanalyze it in terms of exact lines, exactly where you break out. I just think this right here, right, really can't be ignored on the XRP price chart. Um, it's not overly complicated. It's nothing over the top. It's our, are you guys good on the live stream? Are you guys good on the live stream? I think you are. I think you are. Maybe just one person. But look, if, if XRP was to break out of this again, right? And we'll just do the same size line. We'll just do the same size line, right? We just drew that there. And then you were just to take this and do a similar price. I mean, I mean, I mean just that is a $400 XRP. Look, am I saying, right, XRP is guaranteed to go to $400, right? Like, no, but e even if you just had something like this, I mean, you're still looking at like a $70, $80 XRP. And, and that's why, that's why I try to tell people, that's why I try to tell people, right? It's, it's not unrealistic to see these high priced XRP because the, the charts have done these kinds of things before in the past. And I, I don't think this looks ridiculous in the slightest, right? I, I just don't. I think it's very likely we have something similar to what we had before um, coming with XRP. Daniel, good to see you, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Nicholas, just hodl. It, nice, guys. We got, like the whole, we got like the whole crew in here right now. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, read an article today. Ed, let's let's see what Ed's got to say. I read an article today that Bitcoin breaks 
for miners for oh Bitcoin break even for miners is thirty two thousand, and after having it will jump to sixty five thousand, which means the price will go up and also help the rest. Pretty good indicator, I think. Thoughts? Yeah, and, and that's a good indicator. Uh, that's certainly a good indicator. Um, yeah, no, I mean, Ed, that's it's it's just spot on. So essentially, what Ed's saying, right, is if right now the miners. Uh, are breaking even at 32k they're kind of incentivized to be able to sell at the lower prices if miners are forced to sell at the higher price right price is going to go up look the, the the thing for bitcoin at the end of the day is we just only have 21 million bitcoin and now you have entities like blackrock stepping into the ring purchasing bitcoin you have uh the likes of fidelity purchasing bitcoin I mean, guys, these are the kinds of institutions that make massive, massive changes in the supply and demand dynamics of an asset. So I, I think we just need to understand, right, that like the game just changed. The the entire the entire equation is different. And that's something like I want to highlight on the XRP price chart, right? So this pump right here, right? You have the original XRP. And this is how I look at charts, by the way. This is how I look at charts. It's very, it's not conventional. So if... I know I don't talk about charts ever on the channel, but this is how I look at charts, right? So this right here, right, is like the original, hey, who was in XRP when it was OG created? Who was in XRP when it was just first coming out? Then you have this, right? You have this second region, right? Which which I like to call like the XRP community. Like this is when... This is when like the XRP community became a thing and you had that initial pump in liquidity, right? So you had this massive pump in liquidity all right here. And that's that's the XRP community. But what I, I don't think a lot of people know right now, and I, and I don't think is being appreciated, is like if this next pump is institutions, right? How high does the institutional pump bring us, right? How, how much money does that bring in? Because like small changes in this line right here, I mean, that's an $800 XRP. That's a $60, $60 XRP, right? This line isn't getting moved that much with huge swings in XRP's price. So I, 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 think, I think it's really important to appreciate that we don't know how much damage the institutions are going to do to this chart. How much of this gap are they going to eat up as that next phase of liquidity comes rolling in? Um, it, It's really exciting to me, right, to... To know that the next stage is these big institutions um and i i think people are going to be shocked with how much liquidity flows in to be quite frank i think a lot of people are expecting these digital assets to get less parabolic with time i i actually disagree i, I think we could see these assets get more parabolic and, and, and more exponential good defin good to see you man good to see you good to see you um i i I'm trying to s switch some things up real quick. Okay, good. We're live. We're live. We're live. Institutions going to buy memes. Yeah, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it. Uh, that's that's kind of the funny thing. A lot of people do think the institutions are going to be buying meme coins. And, you know, uh, it's, I don't think that's the case. I... I Well, I just want to change the thumbnail for this real quick. A little ch thumbnail change. I don't, I don't like that thumbnail. You know, why can't I just take a screenshot of the chat right now and do a thumbnail? Well, who knows? Life's always got to be difficult. Uh, any questions in the chat, guys? Make sure to drop them. I just went on that... Um. I just went on that chart tirade because you guys wanted it. So, I uh, really appreciate any ideas. Any ideas if you guys want anything talked about. All right. Strong Mountain in the chat. Let's go. Good to see you, Strong Mountain. Let's see, let's see, what do we got, what do we got? Just a random stop at $66. 
Escrow, escrow, escrow. Escrow is interesting. Escrow is interesting. Um, you know what I would like to do? Let's. Yeah, I did make the chart the thumbnail. I did make the chart the thumbnail. I had to, right? Much better thumbnail than I had before. Uh, see what we got. Let's see what we got. Yeah, guys, I, I don't know. I think this chart's just misunderstood, right? Like, what is that institutional pump going to do? Like, what is that going to do, right? $50, 300000 right? It, it could land in anywhere, and then it's, it's important to know, right? If XRP does keep trending in these similar patterns, right, then you likely have another one of these after two. Uh, you probably have another one of these. You kind of just stair step up as more institutions come in, more liquidity flows in, uh, more and more get people get into the asset. I mean, it gets really exciting. And this is why I don't think a, a $200, $2,000 XRP is really like that realistic because look, XRP is going to be around, right? I until XRP is going to be around until like 2040, 2050. So you just kind of start to draw sort of these parabolic kind of chambers on XRP as you get out to these later time frames. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I really like to do charts like this because I think it just opens your mind to really understand like what these charts can do and what they can be over the long term. I think a lot of people are too zoomed in a lot of the times, but uh, here you're looking at XRP to 2034. Is this a chart we're going to see? Who knows? But I, I think it's certainly possible. Yeah, Mary, I'm going to definitely put out like a tweet or something when I'm at XRP Vegas of like when I'm at the conference so people can come hang out, right? Uh, I don't necessarily know exactly what I have planned yet. I, I just kind of got to see the vibe when I get there. Uh, maybe I'll do more stuff. I know there's an after party, so I'm sure I'll see people there. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll certainly be making sure to meet up with people there. Don't you worry about that. I, I just haven't really figured it out yet, right? I don't know what the schedule looks like. I'm not a planner, right? I, I, I'm going to get there and I'm going to drop a tweet and then everyone's going to meet up, but we'll get it. Haha, <laughs> Bobby, that's... That's an incredible message right there. That's an incredible message right there. Bobby Silver Days XRP is on his way. I can feel it. You know, you know, he's getting that notification right now. He's like getting ready to pop in. What a guy. What a guy. I, I assume it's a guy, but uh, incredible guy. Incredible. Yeah, ETH Gates get ETH Gates coming out hard. Um, thoughts on the next step up SEC settle, uh, good question. Good question, Jeff. Um, look, I, I, uh, you know, as much as I would like to see the SEC settle, as much as I would like this case to settle, as much as I would like to see this case over with, it just so far hasn't, it just hasn't, um, the SEC has been extremely persistent on pushing this case to the brink. Uh, they've been extremely persistent on pushing this case to the end. It, we just can't get the SEC to surrender on any, any, any circumstances. So betting that this case was going to settle has been a fool's error and it's been wrong. And um, I think the safe bet is to say it's not going to settle and it's going to go to the distance. From there, I think the biggest thing is going to be if the SEC is going to appeal or not. I, I hope they don't appeal. Um, I, I don't think they will. Um, they didn't appeal the gray grayscale case. I don't know why they would appeal this case. Um, but we just got to see, right? The good news is the SEC can't appeal XRP being a security. So um, I think there's a good chance since they can't appeal XRP being a security, then for them, a large portion of this case doesn't really matter anymore. Um For them, it, they're just kind of getting dragged through the motions. Um, once once Ripple gets through, once Ripple gets through, um, 
once Ripple gets through this case, I think they're going to start landing big United States institutions, to be completely honest with you. Um, I think there's a lot of institutions in the United States that really want to get involved in cryptocurrencies. I don't think everyone really understands that uh, companies like Fidelity have been mining Bitcoin since 2014. Um, Bank of America has been a RippleNet partner since 2018. Like these big banks and these big institutions know all about cryptocurrencies. They want to adopt it. They just can't because of the regulatory environment. So the sooner that changes, the better. We, we really need to see that. We really do. And, and once that changes, I think this industry is going to be extremely different. Um, look, we're in the, we're in the early, early, early stages. We're in the, we're in the stages of Ripple still having to fight these fights, right? Like ideally Ripple wouldn't have to be fighting these fights, right? We'd be past that stage, but we're early, we're early, we're early. And that's why we, I come back to this price chart and I think people really don't, I think people really don't appreciate how early we are, right? Like there's a good chance, there's a good chance that we don't see like mainstream mainstream cryptocurrency like usage in the financial system until kind of this time period right here right anywhere between like late like 2030 right that could be mainstream adoption now that doesn't mean in the meantime xrp can't hit 80 to 100 dollars. it can do that but we're just, i just want to make it clear right we're all the way back here like we're still in like the figure out the rules stage we're still in the hey how does this work within a financial system stage so um there's a long ways to go but it's so promising to see the partnerships ripples already landing it, it's so promising to see how much adoptions ripple already has gotten it, it lets me know that this future right where xrp still is important in this 2024 2029 time frame it, is going to be a very high priced xrp uh let's see what we got in the chat uh, what is that blue thing oh that's trading view notification um ads are there ads huh you uh, your earlier video said someday they will make a movie about ethgate but there's someone making a video about it now yeah you're right you're right you're right <laughs> Yeah, you're right, Steve. You're, you're so right. It's funny. A lot of times when I do those, uh, when I do my videos, I try to get them all done in like a couple shots, right? Because they take a lot of time to edit and stuff. But uh, I, I catch myself sometimes in the middle of saying that and being like, oh, I'm sure I'm going to get corrected on that, but I, I'm not going back and fixing it. But you're 100% you're right. They're already making the videos. Zed, good to see you, man. Great, great to see you. Uh, love having you in the chat, bro. Uh, someday we'll tell our grandkids how we made bank. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I completely agree, Murdoch. Um, look, I, I, I have quite a couple investments that I'm really excited about. Obviously, XRP is by far my favorite one. Uh, I, I don't make a video a day on any other investments I'm into. But, you know, it, it, it's wild kind of the time we're in in history where we're having all these different technologies converging. Um, I think it's going to make for a very, very exciting next uh, next five years. And, you know, no, nothing's more exciting than disrupting the financial system. Nothing's more exciting than, for me, replacing the rails of the entire system. So it, it's it's really cool to be here for it. Spanish Town Roads, where am I located? I'm in um, the northeast of the United States. Obviously, I, I don't want to get into specifics just for security reasons, right? I'm northeast United States, though. Uh, it, it's cold and rainy. It's cold and rainy. It sucks. It sucks. <laughs> uh, hopefully get out of here soon, man. I got to go live down where Daniel's living. I got to live good down where Daniel's living. The sweet heat of Arizona. Big up, UK. Um, you like that Murdoch? I gotta make a trip to India too. I gotta make a trip to India at some point. Uh, it's on my list Murdoch. It's on my list. Once I can start traveling. Once I can start traveling. Bobby, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. How conspiratorial am I feeling about this eclipse? Not conspiratorial at all to be honest with you guys. Uh, I've been, this will be, oh, let's go, Ian, Ian, you know, I always love seeing you in the chat, 
You know, I always love seeing you in the chat. What's going on, Ian? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Uh, funny story about Ian. I still have no idea why. He Maybe he told me at some point, but um, Ian's one of the few subs that I really knew before I started doing live streams just because Ian's account has like 100,000 subscribers. I think Ian has more subscribers than me. He only has like three videos on his channel, but YouTube actually tells you when you get a new sub how many subs they had. So I, I, I would always look at Ian's uh, channel and uh, I, I would just be like, who is Ian? Like, where where'd this guy with all the subs come from? But uh, it was funny because uh, Ian's always active in the uh, live streams. He's always commenting. Great, great guy. Love you, Ian. Uh, it was just funny because he's one of the few people who I was actually looking at his profile before he even showed up on these things. I was like, oh, wh why does this guy have more subs than me? Uh, yeah, I still don't understand it. But man, you, you got like 100, 100K subs on that channel. Congrats. Um, when will the lawsuit end? This summer, it looks like. It looks like the, the lawsuit's going to be over this summer. Um, that's how I see it, right? The last filing is due at the end. Uh, last filings are due early May. And then the case is over. And then Judge Torres just needs to make her ruling. And this is a low-stress ruling, right? We already had the high-stress ruling. The high-stress ruling was... Hey, what's XRP going to be? Is it going to be a security or is it not going to be a security? Is Ripple about to lose their entire business or is Ripple perfectly fine? That was the first ruling. Now this ruling is just what's Ripple slap on the wrist, right? But what do they owe the government? What do they owe the, what do they owe daddy? Uh, what, what's, what's their punishment, right? How much money do they have to fork over? That's all this ruling is. So it's a low stress one in my opinion. It, Ripple's probably going to have to fork over a couple hundred million dollars. The SEC is going to say, we enforced the law. We got a hundred million dollars from Ripple, and now we protected blah, blah, blah. They protected no one, right? They, they didn't deserve the money, but that's how it's going to be framed. Uh, is investing in Ripple a priority for me this year? Um, Ivan, uh, can you just clarify for me ripple or XRP, right? Um, I, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be a smart ass here. I, I I'm legitimately curious ripple or XRP. Cause I love it. I love, uh, investing in both. Oh, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man. Johnny O is Johnny O is a legend, Daniel, but you are too, man. You are too. I really appreciate it, Daniel. You've, you've been a massive supporter of the channel and, and I, I really do appreciate your health so much. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daniel. Uh, Johnny O though is Johnny O is a, is an assassin, man. That guy comes in, uh, that guy comes in with some of the most insane donations. Like it, it, it racks my brain a little bit and, but massive shout out to Johnny, Johnny, if you're here, man, I, I cannot tell you enough how much I appreciate your support and you too, Daniel, you too. So guys, thank you so much. Um, Ivan, thank you. Ripple versus uh, ripple via link to, um, so Ivan, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I do have a pretty substantial ripple position. Um, I, I got in at really good prices, right? I got in at like $20 a share and ripples buying back their equity at 60 right now. So I'm already sitting on like a fat profit. And if ripples valuation really is in the 60, I probably, I'm probably not going to buy anymore because not even trying to sound like not even trying to flex, right? My positions are already like I mean, close to up 150%. Maybe I'll polish off some shares if I get enough, but I'm not, I'll tell you right now, Ivan, I, I'm more invested in Link2. I'm more, inv I mean, sorry. I'm more interested right now in starting a position in Uphold. I would love to get a position going in Uphold. I like Uphold a lot. I like where their valuation is. Um, it's a company I'm very excited about. Um, not that I'm more excited about Uphold than Ripple, right? I'm more excited about Ripple than Uphold, but I've already got a very sizable Ripple position. Um, I, I, I'm excited. I'm excited to to possibly move myself into some Uphold, and maybe even a little bit of Link to, right? But I'm a little. I'm more excited about Uphold. Uphold's kind of what I think is going to be a sleeping giant. So. 
Uh, that that's a little alpha for you, Ivan. Ivan, if I didn't have Ripple, I would be buying it. I, I love Ripple, the company. I think they're one of the best companies out there. I don't think their equity is a deal, to be completely honest with you. I don't think you're getting any kind of deal. I Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you're getting a deal on Ripple shares, to be honest with you. I, I know there's a lot of people who have made claims that Ripple's going to go IPO at $500 a share. I don't see that happening. Um, I, I'm going to give it to you straight. I think Ripple will probably IPO if we're it, it, on a very, very good day, probably between like 50 and $60 billion, which is no, nothing to sneeze at. That's incredible. I, it, do you want to, if Ripple IPOs over 30 in between 30 and 40 billion, it could be one of the largest IPOs in history. So uh, don't get me wrong, right? That's still fantastic. I, it's it, it, absolutely incredible IPO, but a, a lot of people I think have put a, over the top price targets on a ripple ipo so right now a 60 dollars link to share is valuing ripple probably in the 25 to 30 billion dollar range on a bad day that could be where ripple ipos so i just don't know if you're getting any steel on link to I'll, I'll do a shameless plug right um jake claver from the mastermind group he can actually get deals on Ripple equity at a lower price. Um, that's where I got my Ripple equity from. That's how I got it in the 20s. Uh, interesting discussion, though. Interesting discussion. A great question, Ivan. But I think Uphold's a little bit more of a deal. I think Uphold could... I think Uphold is only trading at a billion-dollar valuation. So I think that could be a deal. Another deal on there too, and uh, sorry, you got me excited, Ivan, is actually might be Stripe. So uh, just a year ago, if you take a look at Stripe on the Link2 platform, it had a valuation of maybe like 90 billion, something insane like that. And now, um, and now Stripe is trading down in the 40s. So that might be a little bit of an interesting position. Let me see what you got here, Ivan. I got a position of Ripple at 36 price point. Also agree. Oh, Ivan, that's that's fantastic. Great, great, great. That's awesome, man. What a great what a great price point, right? It always feels good when you're in under the company buying back the shares. So, Ivan, congratulations to you. Um that that's a good little pickup right there. That's a good little pickup. Um it it always feels good. Oh, Ripple showing 41 on Link2. So, I'll explain that to you guys real quick for those of you guys who don't know. Um, essentially, the reason why Link2 is able to offer their shares, shares cheaper is because actual uh, Ripple customers are selling out of their equity. I mean, Ripple employees are selling out of their equity, so they're willing to take lower prices. So very, very interesting stuff. Um, yeah, there's still a lot of room to profit from a Ripple IPO. I would just understand, right, that if your goal is to flip Ripple stock, right, you're not getting like an insider deal right you're, you're still taking risk um it's i don't think it's a no-brainer but if your plan is to hold ripple for the long term i think you're getting a fantastic price so i there's a reason why i own shares it's a company i'm obviously super excited about i just don't think it's like right i don't think you're getting you're not getting ripple at a, a hundred million dollar valuation they're going public at 10 billion silver days there you are man what up what up what up silver days Silver Days, someone said uh, earlier in the chat, they're like, I'm just waiting for Silver Days to come flying in with support the channel, smash the like, Silver Days, man. Really appreciate you here. Love to see you on the stream. Uh, you know it, you know it. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Silver Days. You're always incredible for the stream. Guys, make sure to smash the like button for Silver Days. I mean, yeah, he, he's doing the God's work down there in the comments. Let's get let's go over 250 for silver days. Let's go over 250 uh, Ed said I don't use Binance any true true to the any true to the post earlier about them pausing withdrawals Ed, you know, there's a lot of reasons why Binance might pause withdrawals at any given moment There very well could be true to those rumors, but I'll guarantee you that the the story behind the rumors probably isn't true um that's usually how it is that's usually how it is um I, we'll, we'll have to just see right we'll have to just see usually the rumors on why they're pausing 
people like to make it seem like Bi Binance is out of XRP or has some kind of other crazy thing. And um, it usually it's just nothing. Yeah, Adam, price is, uh, Stripe is still very expensive at $40 billion, but it's a massive company. And the thing is that I like about Stripe is their equity is dipping big. So whenever there's a big pullback, right, especially when you go from like a $90 billion valuation to a $40 billion, at least you know you're getting a deal, right? At least you know you're not buying the top. So Stripe is still very expensive, but it's, it's cool. You're actually getting a nice little dip in the private equity market. Exchanges are tightening. Yeah, very possible the exchanges are tightening up a little bit. On Crypto Navigator Show. Who's that? Who's that? What's that? I haven't heard about it. I'm always down to go on another show. I'm always down to go on another show. Uh, the only thing is, is like I just don't have a lot of time. And obviously I work like I'm live streaming from my car. Uh, so uh, a lot of times as much as I would like to go on these other people's channels, it's just hard to work it out. Like earlier today, I don't know. Earlier today, I was messaging Zach Rector. Actually, I don't think I told you guys this. I was trying to get Zach Rector to come on this live. Right. I was like, yo, Zach, I'm going live tonight. Right. But he couldn't do it. And then he's like, let's do it tomorrow. And I can't do it tomorrow. So, uh, uh we'll get Rector on here at some point and me and him can, do a little bull bear debate. That'd be a lot of fun. Yep, exchanges are definitely tightening on KYC. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. KYC is going to be mandatory, in my opinion. Uh, I don't see us moving to a world where KYC isn't necessary. Uh, $8 XRP? Yeah, I mean, I hope it's higher than $8, but... That's a good starting point, right? It's a good starting point. Oh my god, my not Zach Rector. No, we we I I'd I want to get Zach Rector on here. I'd love to talk with him. Just shoot some stuff back and forth. It's good to switch it up. I'd love to get uh Eddie on here too. Uh she always pops into the chat. Would love to have her on. Very interesting. Tranglo just tweeted out a Bank of International Settlements post. Uh, Triangle is an XRP user. Bank of International Settlements has been linked to uh, linked to XRP. Oh no, I, I'm just tired, TK man. Yeah, we're not going to go down that road to Zach Rector. We're not going to go down that road. Uh, let's see what else we got. When we see Ripple, where do we see the price of Ripple after IPO? Linda P. Jones said it was extremely. Yeah, I've seen Linda P. Jones's estimates. I think they're um, I, I think they're a little high. To be completely honest with you, I don't think I don't think there's any way Ripple's going to be IPOing at five hundred dollars. I quite frankly think it's a little ridiculous, but we'll see. We'll see. I'd be happy to be wrong, right? I just think she's way overboard on that. I think Ripple will probably IPO. I mean, probably under a hundred dollars, right? And that's still a fantastic IPO. If Ripple IPO at five hundred dollars, it'd be the largest IPO by ten country miles, right? So, yep, Trianglo is owned forty percent by Ripple for sure. New to crypto, your thoughts on HBAR and XLM? I also invest in XRP heavily. Thank you. Uh, well, congratulations for getting into crypto, Hugo. Um, it's definitely uh, an exciting journey and. Uh, people like me, right? I've been around here for qu quite a bit of time and I, I'm still learning new stuff every single day. So you never stop learning. 
um i will say you're probably starting off with some uh, very solid projects right so congratulations to that too um i'm a fan of hbar and xlm um not as much as xrp i'll, I'll tell you why um i i just to let you know right because i feel like if i'm giving my opinion on these you should at least know i, I hold both hbar and xlm um xlm to me reminds me a little bit of uh kind of a bing google situation i i see google as xrp and bing as uh xlm maybe a lot of people don't like that comparison but that's sort of how i see things playing out does is being a bad service is being a bad company absolutely not it's just that xrp i mean it's just that google dominates most of the market it's how i see xlm versus xrp going hbar is very cool in terms of data i just don't know if hbar has necessarily a path to find for it um i'm a bigger fan of uh a flare i'm a bigger fan of quant those are projects i'm a little more bullish on than hbar and xlm but like I said, I hold HBAR and XLM. I don't have anything against them. And uh, my opinions are, are, not, are not a gospel, right? I get stuff wrong all the time, just like everyone else. So just, just my overall thoughts. I don't like Algo that much, to be honest. Algo seems a little directionless. I used to hold Algo. I don't anymore. But... I could be wrong, right, guys? I get stuff wrong all the time. So a lot of people get panicked if they hear that I'm not a fan of something anymore. Uh, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it any more seriously than you take anyone else's opinion, right? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, I'll tell you exactly. Jason's rector is a joke. Uh, don't worry, Jay. We'll have a good conversation, man. We'll have a good conversation, and it, and maybe we'll at least get the Zach Rector haters here, and maybe Zach Rector will bring the Mickle haters. Uh. Hey, are you an investor in PolySign? I'm not. I'm not an investor in PolySign. To be completely honest with you guys, I didn't meet the accreditation uh, standards for a while. Um, there was someone who helped me get access to Ripple shares despite the fact that I wasn't accredited. So they kind of threw me a bone there. I just passed my Series 65. So now I'm technically an accredited investor. Uh, that's something I've been grinding in the background for a bit now. It was a struggle. Uh, I, I really had to study hard for that. It, it was a beast of an exam, but um, got through it, passed it, accredited investor now. Uh, license could be a financial advisor, hopefully going to do stuff with that in the future. So uh, just, just a big step in progressing my career. <laughs> You're funny. You're funny. Yeah, guys, I I have no comment. I would love to see you and Jake discuss things like Quant, HBAR, XRP. You guys agree on a lot and disagree on a lot. Jake who? Jake Claver? Is that Jake Claver? Let me know. I've I've talked to Jake plenty of times. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Jake. Jake Jake's a great guy, man. Jake is a great guy. Just just a stand up dude. Just a stand up dude. Um, Space Cash. Let me know if you're talking about Jake Claver. I assume you are. I assume you are. Great, great dude. Great dude. Just super genuine. Super genuine. Um, TK, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jake, Jake's a super genuine guy and one of the hardest working dudes I've seen. Like, talk about a guy who just sticks his head down and just grinds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I have nothing. I have nothing but excellent things to say about Jake. Um, nothing but excellent things to say. <laughs> you guys are funny. You guys are funny. Oh, you're in his group? Yes. Space. So he, he reached out to me. He reached out to me and um, he told me about it. And uh, I, I joined it and I was like, you know, this is definitely worth it. Get access to those Ripple shares. I used to be more active in the group, unfortunately, right? Uh, I, I, you only have so much time in a day and I, was, I have to focus a little bit more, uh, more on my own things too. But Jake has never, never, Jake has always done everything to reach out to me, help me out. Uh, he's a great guy.
Yeah, I would love to do a live with Jake. Me and Jake, back in the day, we used to do uh, quite a bit of Twitter spaces together. Me and him used to always get on and do it. I have to reach out. Jake, Jake is a little bit more structured than me, right? I'm more of a, hey, it's 11 o'clock and I'm not doing anything. Let's jump on a live stream. So, um I, I kind of just I kind of just do it. So I'll, I'll have to link up with Jake. I'll have to link up with Jake. Um, he's great, great, great dude. Me and Jay could have some fantastic conversations. Uh, yeah, no, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Um, uh, that would be a lot of fun. Congrats. Used to have my 765, 63, 24. Oh, that's awesome, Sean. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to need any of the rest. Um, if I do anything, I would love to do some financial advice. Um, I would love to be able to help people kind of with their own financial situations. I know a lot of what you guys know me as XRP, but I, I do a lot of other stuff outside of XRP, kind of just a finance junkie in general. I don't really talk about it here just because most people don't care. But uh, yeah, for me, I really only needed my 65. Um, but I did do, um, I was just using free materials to study the entire time. I never got any of the books or anything. So in my course of studying, I came across a lot of series seven videos, a lot of 66. Um, and I kind of just watched through them, but, uh, it, it, it's, you got to put the work in, you got to put the work in. I think when I first got started, I expected it to be like, Oh, you know, I'll just figure this out, right? I know markets. I, I I know regulation. I could just figure this out. That was not the case. I had to stick my nose in there and had to grind, but it was, it was good. It was good. It was good. I have such a better understanding of markets and investing now. And, uh, you know, that's that's all I can ask for. Uh, space crash. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, yeah, I'll definitely reach out to uh, Jake. And get that going because you're right i i should have a conversation with them um yeah guys i'm gonna jump off too man i gotta get to bed I, i'm absolutely exhausted guys I, i'll see you guys tomorrow i would love to see you guys on the afternoon live stream you guys are absolutely incredible thank you thank you thank you for all you do to support the channel uh love being able to get on here and just shoot the shit with you guys you guys are awesome so thank you so much uh I, i'll talk to you guys later